McLaren has revealed its 2020 Formula One car ahead of a season where it faces the difficult task of closing the gap between the midfield and the leading teams, having won the battle to be best of the rest in 2019. At the end of last year, technical director James Key promised the MCL 35 would feature concept changes to help McLaren make the next big step. Most of those big changes have come at the back of the car. McLaren has followed the trend of producing smaller side pods for this year, which are visibly tighter at the front as well as towards the rear, where the bodywork tapers into the coke bottle shape at the back. Key said McLaren had to commit to the smaller side pods early in the car's design last year, as the packaging demands for the internals, particularly the engine package, are critical to the design of this area. McLaren has also made changes at the front of the car, and the front wing features some small detail changes. The outer end sweeps down more gradually than it did last year, indicating a slight shift towards the loaded outboard concept. Running a front wing with more outboard load can offer greater peak downforce, as Mercedes and Red Bull showed in 2019, but it can be difficult to manage that consistently. This is one of the reasons several teams prefer to have the wings swoop down in this area, creating more outwash around the front tyre and making the airflow more controllable. McLaren has joined Red Bull in revealing a car with a slightly narrower nose for this year. The Mercedes-style cape just behind the nose manages the airflow that travels underneath the chassis and into the barge boards. The tip of the nose still features the slots that enable more air to be channelled under the centre of the car. McLaren has talked of being able to make changes to the geometry of the car that weren't possible with its 2019 machine, with Key describing last year's MCL 34 as the father of the new car because of the many lessons the team could learn from it. Changes have been made to the front suspension, raising the top wishbone at the outboard end where it meets with the wheel. Increasing the height of these components reduces the interference in the airflow travelling from the front wing into the barge boards and the side pods. This helps with suspension geometry as well, as it induces more negative camber at higher speeds when the car gets closer to the ground, while allowing the tyres to have a bigger contact patch in the corners at lower speeds. Looking at the rear suspension, the pull rod comes forward a long way before it disappears into the bodywork, showing just how far forward the suspension mounting points are. This has been done to minimise the cross-section of the repackaged gearbox. This also makes the coke bottle area between the rear wheels bigger, offering an aerodynamic benefit. The barge boards on the launch spec car look fairly simple compared to the elaborate designs of the top teams. But this is an area of the car which is under constant development, so look closely for more detail to appear in this area when testing begins in Spain. The air intake above the driver's head is bigger than we have seen on other cars. There is a triangular shaped rollover bar in the centre, but around it there are multiple duct inlets. One of these will feed the turbo, and the others will be used for various cooling requirements of the car's internals. The lower duct in this area reduces McLaren's ability to manage airflow spillage around this opening in the same way we have seen from the other teams who've been able to put small aerodynamic devices in this area. McLaren's car features a more detailed rear wing than we have seen on some of the other launch spec cars this week. The end plates have several small veins cut into them, performing different functions depending on where they are placed. The veins on the lower part of the end plate are turning the air outwards into the space behind the rear tyre, which can help reduce lift from the air that flows over the top of the wheel. The veins on the upper part of the wing are turning the airflow inwards towards the centre of the car, which is an attempt to reduce drag. The curved sections on the outer surface of the wing are there to mimic the airflow direction of the wing inside the end plates. If this design can move the air in a similar way to the main portion of the wing, then it will reduce drag because there will not be as much of a clash when the air on each side of the end plate meets as it comes off the back of the wing. McLaren's strong 2019 season means this was never a time for it to try anything radical, but the details we've seen already on the MCL 35 show it is following a clear path and trying to unlock potential in areas that could not be exploited with its previous car. It took a lot of hard work to get to the front of the midfield last year, but the job of catching the big three teams will be even tougher and is likely to take much longer.